So I was going to talk to you today about, 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 about what we read the scripture so we can just be in line with the Lord. Matthew 21. Matthew 21. This is the reason why y'all got to pray for me that I stay, that I stay in the will of God, that I do this until my time is up, but he makes me the revivalist that I need to be. Now, I ain't afraid. I ain't afraid. You put me in a room with a bunch of Satanists and I don't care. I'll go with me and the heavenly host and I will say the exact same thing. You know why? Because God wishes that none would perish. And let me, let me say this too. Oh, oh. God's got to kill the fear in the saints. If God don't kill this fear, Y'all, some of some, oh uh, Lord, let me but, but he put it easier. You you have you have lied to the Holy Ghost because you said, I'm, I'm I'll do this, I'll do that. And yet God is, has tested us with all this stuff that had just happened. There's no way you would go to a uh, witch's coven and witness. There's no way God can send you to certain things. He won't send you because you have fear. And that fear said, saying, Well, we gotta know. When is our no, no? What did the apostles do? I've never seen a council of the apostles saying, "Don't go to wait." If the Holy Ghost say, "Don't go," then they didn't go. It was timing, wasn't fear. Don't mix up timing and fear. You won't even witness on your job. So how can he send you to the complete opposite? You want to go to people where he'll do a miracle. Timing and fear, you got to be very careful. God needs you. When you say, Lord, I'll go, that means cancel out how you feel about everything around you. That means surroundings can't matter. I proved it. I proved it. He told me to believe while I was on dialysis. He told me to pray for people while blood is coming out my body. Do you believe, Daryl? Yes, I do, Lord. Well, you're preaching tonight. Tonight after dialysis? Get up and preach. How? I don't have the strength. I can't barely make it in the house. Guess where I was at seven? Guess where I was? Woozy and everything. Getting up here. Holding on to stuff. Freedom pushing me up the stairs. My legs won't work. But when I got up here, all of a sudden something kicked in. I'll be dancing and shouting and speaking in tongues. Going to my new to she and going to people's churches and casting out demons after I had dialysis and being attacked by witches and all that stuff after I had dialysis. God wants to see how far you'll take it because then He'll give you power for that's called the next season. Once you once He sees that you'll go with no guarantee, my God. Once he sees that you'll go with no guarantee, with no guarantee that you're going to have favorable result. Once he sees that you'll go, then all of a sudden your shadow heals. No one taught shadow healing. They just walked and a shadow my soul. And it didn't even say that it was the time of the day for a shadow. Lord... Mm. Some people happy, some people going, hurry up, go on. I will. <sighs> make us hungry again. Lord Jesus, make us hungry again. Make us hungry. Ah-yah! Make us hungry. That's why he starved us. That's why he starved us from church. Some people are hungry. And some people just, let's get it on. Let's get it on. Oh, the first verse, it says, And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethpage unto the Mount of Olives, then they sent Jesus to disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them, bring them unto me. If any man says aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. Now, I'm going to give you this example 
and I'll stop. Okay? I can't get into this whole story. But I want to say the Lord has need of you. I want you to look at someone and say the Lord has need of you. Now I want you to tell them for real. The Lord has need of you. Now some scholars believe that the donkey is, is one of the most mentioned animals in the Bible. Um, you'll see donkeys. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of this. Um, donkeys were common mounts of Jewish kings. Okay, I thought it would be horses. The young donkey would fulfill the kingly prophecies. Only the king rode on his donkey. The young donkey had never been ridden, but would also communicate that he came in peace. And the donkey meant peace. Some of us scholars know that. Um, no one has rode on this donkey. Rabbis recognize this messianic prophecies about this. You can look that up in Revelations 19, 11 to uh, 16. Um, it said if Israel was worthy, even for one day, that the Messiah would come on clouds of, of, of glory. But if not, he would still come on that day on a donkey. That's what scholars would say. All right. Um, this goes back. Now, this goes back to um, um, the study of who was coming. That's why they missed Jesus. Right. They missed him because of how they thought he would come. They wanted a king, not a baby. Okay. They wanted they wanted swift deliverance because of the Roman rule on them. And I, I want to fit this in with us. Um, we want Jesus for immediate deliverance, not process deliverance. Nobody said anything, but I'm going to say it again. If Jesus says, I'm going to deliver you today, if you get a prophecy saying today your deliverance is coming, we will shout all over the place. But if we say today your deliverance has a seed and it must be born, then it must be a baby and weaned. Um, this is, oh, man, can you uh, hear me real quick? It's one thing. You know why Mary should get a lot of credit? is because she had to help nurse her own deliverance. She had to hold deliverance, nurse deliverance. She had to keep deliverance alive. She had to protect deliverance, raise deliverance. She had to nurture it. She had to whip it when it got wrong. If there was a thing with Jesus, which I believe it wasn't, but she still had to feed her deliverance until he got to the point where he could say, Mary, and not mommy. Until the day he said, I no longer need a mother. You take care of her. Take care of who helped me. And what I will do is become her savior too. Now, most of us don't want deliverance in stages. That's all it is. We don't want stage deliverance. We want immediate deliverance because we do not like the pressure of failure. And deliverance, you fail until you succeed. Oh, man. Process is, process is failure until success. Oh, you don't believe me? Go to the gym. They give you a weight that you fail at. Why? Because they want to see your limit. The only way you know where you are is to fail. Why do they give you tests in school? So you can score low so they know where to help you. If every time you passed everything, you don't need a teacher if you could do teacher work. Y'all not talking to me. And everybody in the church, especially our culture, wants to look like we're A students in the spirit. Pray for somebody. God said this. I know. Oh, he did? Okay. And God told me to tell you this. Yep, yep. That's in my spirit too. God, 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 said, God told me to tell you this. Yep, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. I see that. I, I, I see. You don't see everything. That's why he's saying it. You got to be lying because the spirit... First of all, we know it's true because you're agreeing. Now, I'm a professional at this now. you agreeing with me. You ain't saying no. You're agreeing. But you just don't want to agree to come up. You want to agree to be equal. I have never seen a day 
where people swear by being equal. Ain't nobody above you in the spirit. Nobody. Except Jesus. Well, you know, I hear the Lord. He gave me that revelation already. He did? Well, why you ain't got no souls in no church? That's right. Come on and praise him. Look, he coming up too. Look at this. Come up to the pulpit. <laughs> it's all right. Take him. It's all right. <laughs> Oh, God, that is the funniest thing I've ever seen. Why you don't have nothing yet? Obviously, God wants to teach you. You got to accept. Now, this is the problem. You got, this is the problem. Do you understand, before I go forward, that Jesus, the Bible says he humbled himself. He humbled himself. He humbled himself in glory. That means he saw, that means he picked who would be his mother. And he humbled his Godship to Mary, who was about 14. She was picked. It's not random. And he said, I'll listen to her until I can leave her. Because she, my God, because I'm good at being God, <laughs> but see, but I've never been a baby before. But since I made babies and I know the mechanism, let me humble myself and wipe my brain out so that when I come, I can be humble and I don't destroy her even in the womb. She have God growing inside of her. Y'all not hearing me. And so now, here we go. I'm got, let me hurry up through here. Now, so now we got, we got this grown. Oh, yeah. We got this grown, the grown up Lord that is getting ready now for his final process. And he has to fulfill messianic prophecy. Okay? He has to fulfill. Now, everybody uses Zechariah 9, I believe. It might be 9 and 9, right? Everybody uses that prophecy. But there's something funny that I found. It's in um, Job 30, 39 and 3. Job 39 and 3. I found this. Job 39 and 3. Messianic prophecy fulfills everything that a king must do to take over a region, right? Everything that a king must do now, and, and it's now, it's not just, it's, it's, it's prophecy about who's coming. It's prophecy about kingship and lordship. It's also details on what a king must do, right? So a king that comes in on a horse means war. So that means he's going to overthrow something, but he's going to overthrow it by war. Jesus said, I came in peace. So he rides a donkey on purpose. But the donkey must fulfill a purpose. The donkey can't not be ridden by anybody else. So today, you represent the donkey. Because the donkey also represents some type of stubbornness in their own will. Hear me. Job 39 and 3 says, Who have sent out the wild ass free? Or who have loosed the bands of the wild ass. Who has loosed the bands? This is all the way in Job. Job 39, starting at the third verse, right? Let me get it. Y'all got it? Put it up. You got it? They put it up? Who? All right, what, what, what version of this? No, I want king. Not new. Okay. Go to five. All right. Who have sent out the wild ass free? Or who have loosened the bands of the wild ass? Who has in Job? It was his disciples who did. Now, here he's talking about himself. But he's setting himself up also. My, in the book of Job. Your deliverance has been planned way before you were born. So people who call you wild don't know that you're really, you're wild on a purpose. Because the donkey is wild until the word goes out from Jesus, right? From Jesus, there's need of you how you are. <laughs> Untrained and untamed. The king is about to ride you. 
The king is going to use you. Oh, God. You have never been used like this before. But the king himself, Jesus himself, is about to mount you and use you to come into an area as king. That means God, don the donkey, oh, God, got a chance to walk on territory that belonged to Jesus. That means Jesus is going to use you in your way to help conquer territory. And he don't want you to change. He just needs to ride you so everything is, now your route is different. Can you imagine? I want you to imagine this. You having a conversation with the Lord and he's saying, I know you do this, this, and this. And I know what happens every Friday at 9.15 p.m. And you go, oh, I'm not worthy. He knows that. That's why he chose you. These donkeys now were tied up. They were tied to a post, right? They were bound to something. And they could not get free. Don't, don't you understand this story is perfect because it has an unnamed master. There's a master. How do you know that? Jesus says, if someone comes out and asks, tell. Now, there's different, there's different, um, there's, these, there's a different text of this, right? If you look in by, you'll find it. There's a different text, text, and so that means there's a different view, right? Jesus says, if someone does come out, tell them the master. The ma what do you mean, the master? I, that, what do you mean? Uh, 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 look, Keith, what do you mean when it says the master? I thought the master is the owner of the donkeys. So what do you mean the master? The one that trumps the, the owner. He didn't say the owner has need. He said the master has need. The master of what? The master of the donkey's process. The one who's getting ready to take this donkey and use this donkey and it will never, ever be used like this again. I need a donkey who, mm, my God, I need a donkey. I need, I'm going to make stubbornness willing. The only way God is going, my soul, the only way God is going to change you is if you let him get into your life and steer you the way he's going. Ooh, I need somebody to shout out amen. amen. Because you are retaining so much of your life and you're staring your life and that's why you keep bumping your head in the same, even spiritually. This don't have to be in the natural. Even spiritually, you think your ministry is going a certain way, a way because you heard his voice say it. You just didn't let him ride you to it. Just because you heard his voice say it, many hear his voice. Few get, let him ride inside. Because the way he's going to take you is not the way you would go for yourself. So you think it's not him. The donkey has essentially, now I want you to look at this. The donkey goes from, the donkey, not Jesus. Hear me. The donkey goes from being tied to a post to now not even walking on the sand. He's walking on palms and people's coats and jackets. So the donkey gets glory, just like the rider. Because his feet never touches the dirt. Don't you understand that when God gets into your life, dirt don't matter no more? He will cover, he will cover the dirt of your life because he's riding you. Because you're available. Ooh, somebody shout out available. Now, I did this backwards. Zechariah 9 and 9 says, Rejoice exceedingly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Lo, the king doth come to thee. Righteous and saved is he, afflicted and riding on an ass, on a colt, a son of a she-ass. Right? Um, now he comes and now he's... Now this starts out in Beth page and this Beth page, the, the meaning of Beth page is, is um, house of unripe figs. Right, a house of figs, a house, a place of unripe figs, is located on the ridge overlooking Jerusalem, called the Mount of Olives. Lord Jesus, um, 
this is very important. Now, um, I won't get into that because I don't have that much time. Um, it is important that you understand, and I'll stop. It's important that you understand location. Somebody shout out location. location. Now, I'm getting ready to prophesy to you that God said to a few, he's changing your, your location because he's changing your title. And you will not be what you think you are. You cannot be what you th want to be in the region you are. And that location means everything. Y'all didn't hear me. Some desire to be closer to the house of God. So he's going to change your location because when he changes lo your location, he also changes your call. If you want a place, a place to live because of comfortability, then you're going to have to wait. But if you want a place according to the will of the Father based on availability, not comfortability, he's going to work for you quick. He's going to make you step out. And then he's going to make you step out on a way it's going to seem like it's not him. And all of a sudden, he jumps in and he's riding you to where you need to be. This donkey needed to be where Jesus was going to get off. I'm going to say this again. Jesus needs to get off at a certain place, and you're going to bring him there. Ooh, I must be talking. <laughs> I'm going to say this again. It just hit a few of you. Jesus needs to get off, but he needs a vehicle. For he is not, he cannot break his rule. That's why he had to get here by a woman. He had to come here by flesh, but he cannot walk to where he's going to be crucified. He has to be ridden. He needs a way to get into the ghetto. That's why you can't leave where you are. He needs a way to get into the office. He needs a way, and you are the way. But he's going to, you're going to drop him off there. You won't be able to stay. The donkey never gets seen again after he drops off Jesus. But he is mentioned. Oh, Lord. I'm getting myself in trouble. The donkey represents stubbornness. But with Jesus, he looks like a horse. I, can I say that again? I feel like slapping myself with this mic. With Jesus on him, he looks like a stallion. It doesn't look like a stubborn animal. That's why you can't make it. Because without him, you look wild. You look crazy. You look off. You look like all your decisions are hyper-spiritual. And you don't know what you're doing. But with him on you, you look like a stallion. And this is the reason why we can't get things done, Andrew. Because we do things in his name, but without him riding. trying to get married because he said so you're just not taking him because he wouldn't take you that direction <laughs> he wouldn't take you that direction you're trying to you're trying to fit the part right oh god don't let me you want to fit the part to get a spouse he's saying just be yourself you want to lose weight and look good in the mirror and that's for your eyes, not his. But if he was riding you, you would look good the way you are and to who he has for you because he's going to take you to where you should be seen. You'll be seen, not observed. Y'all didn't hear that one. Pretty girls get observed. <laughs> Fine men get observed. Oh, they look good, but they're sour. But someone that sees you, that is seen, they look through all that stuff and go, I need that. Oh, man. So you would never have to fix yourself up for somebody that sees you. Man, man. It, 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 yeah, yeah, I'm trying to help somebody up in here. 
you're still putting on long lashes and, and 20 inch nails. And that's observed. Still getting seven different types of hair. What you got? I got khaki wacky in, in, in Florida and Brazilian. Brothers, what? what yeah, I'm going to the gym because I got to get rid of this beer gut. Brother, first of all, you haven't drank beer. It's not beer. It's pork fat. And you're trying to, you're trying to look good for someone that would be like, ooh. I'm, I'm serious. You're trying to set up a business plan, and God is getting ready to bump you into the plan. You're trying to set up a business plan, and God is saying, before you do that, acknowledge me. I have someone who are, has already, I have someone who has your plan already. They have your plan. That's not your gift. You're essentially trying to make stuff your gift by reading every book you can and absorbing stuff that ain't you. And essentially what, okay, let me give you this one thing and then I'll let you go. What we have done, what we have done, Clint, what we have done is we said, hey, let's go into real estate. You read all the books on real estate, you think you get all the stuff, this information, and you do have it, yet you don't have the knack. So someone who has the knack comes into real estate and automatically just knows what to do. Then they write books about what they did, and now they become our genius. And we follow after what they did, but if you ask them, who did you learn from, they'll say, I don't know. Ask yourself, who taught Warren Buffett? We look to him as the father of finance, yet we read all his books. And he don't accredit himself to nobody, hardly. Now look at these people. Okay, let me, let, me, let, me, let me help you. I want you to look at this. So uh, let me deal in the music industry. In the music industry, I came up when, when Puff was just an A&R. Puff Daddy was an A&R. And Andre Harrell was everything. Everything, right? Now, here we go. All we have is a guy who's great at throwing parties. Throwing parties. Throwing parties. Throwing parties. Throw a party here. It's, it's big. It's just beautiful, right? Yet, what was in him was greater than Andre. Now, years later, Andre Harrell worked for Puff. Uh, uh, he, Puff went to levels that Andre never, ever reached. Never. True. Who taught Puff? He says, Andre gave me my start. But who taught him? He taught himself. Why? Because it was already in him. Now, everybody follows his plan. It will never work. Why? Because God puts stuff in us instinctly. Nobody taught me deliverance. Yet people come to me and say, why, why is deliverance on you? I don't know. You should do a class or write a book. And I go, okay, but why should I? Because if God put it in you, you would do the same thing. So what I'm saying is we are all doing stuff that we don't have the instinct for. It will never work because instinct, instinct is not something I'm talking about that's worldly. I'm talking about a God-given thing inside of you. Hear me. I want you to hear this. Hear this. When the donkey is called by Jesus, no one leads the donkey where Jesus is going. Jesus just gets on. Done. Y'all still ain't hear me. The donkey doesn't have a bit in his mouth and it's not being led. It's just being ridden. But because of who's riding it is with purpose, the donkey takes Jesus to the exact destination that he needs to go without any steering. What in the world is this? Do you understand that you don't need a book? Now, I'm not saying not to read, but you don't need a book on where God is taking you. All you need is a willing spirit. Still ain't got it yet. What you're paying for is already inside of you. Did, can I, did I help anybody? You, what, what ministry you got? You don't need to keep reading Kenneth Hagin. You need to do. And then, my God, what, what's inside of you, you need to pray for and then be in the right place. 
and all of a sudden you land where you need to go. Amen. And you hear me yet? See what I'm saying, Andrew? Yes. Yes. This is not a thing now. We're living in the last day. We don't got time to read up about little Nazi. We need to be on our knees praying for the people who are going to be affected, infected and affected by that stuff. Who has a book on that? Who has a book on satanic sneakers? We've never seen it before. Y'all still didn't hear me. Get it? We don't, have a, we don't have a manual on how to bind up Nike. Because I ain't throwing away my Nikes. I don't care who they dedicated to. My feet get them. When I ride them Nikes, they go in the, the direction of Jesus Christ. I don't care if they got 20666 on the bottom of it. Child, bye. You can write everything you want. These feet is going the way of Jesus. And I ain't throwing you out. I paid too much money for my sneakers. Somebody ain't talking to me. <laughs> I got a bunch of Nike gear, a bunch, because I like the way they fit and I like the way they feel. I ain't taking it all. So don't come to me going, Pastor, they're dedicated to the devil. So what? I rededicated to Jesus. There you go. Bingo. Every piece of... Don't tell me, oh, my clothes are from Target. Might as well join it. Hear me what I'm saying. Hear me what I'm saying. Just because you're wearing Target clothes don't mean the devil ain't in it. Because you brought something from Walmart. That don't make it Christian. <laughs> what do you mean? What are you talking about? Cheapest Christian? No, they all the devil. Your red bottom is the devil. Your Target shoes is the devil. Your, your, your Versace is the devil and your Walmart is the devil. Your DSW is the devil. Whatever you want is the devil. He's the prince of the air. Amen. Change his purpose. The purpose of the donkey was to be a stubborn animal. To be rebellious. And not to have no glory. And somebody had to lead it. This donkey, that blew my mind. When I saw that Auntie Susan, I said, God, this donkey don't have nobody leading it, but it already knew the way to go. And it already, nobody stopped it. It knew when to stop. Because the maker was on it. Your purpose, your purpose, oh my sabropaya, your purpose knows where to take you. It knows what, it knows what, where to drop you off at. It, it knows where. It knows exactly where you're just afraid to get on it. You're just afraid because it's a, the, what you, the vehicle that you need to, to ride your purpose in, it, on, it, it's, it's untamed. It, it doesn't have, you, you, you see what I'm saying? You're afraid of it. it. It's almost like you're afraid. You know when you're afraid to get in the car with people because you know they drive wild? You know, and they're the, your only way to get to where you need to go? You know, you got to get to a train and you got to get to a, a plane and you get in, in, in the Uber driver or the cab driver is driving crazy. And sometimes you just got to close your eyes and be like, Lord, please get me there. And you arrive there safely. You didn't arrive there pleasantly. It's just like Jonah. <laughs> he arrived to his place dirty in the bile of a whale. So when he came out, he wasn't clean. Sometimes we lie when we say God wants a clean vessel. We use it out of context. Ooh, I know the church don't like this one. God don't want, my mama used to say that. God don't want no dirty vessels. And that's true in his time. And in its place, you also, listen, let me give you this analogy. If you were thirsty, if you were thirsty, you was dying of thirst, and there was a dirty cup sitting next to a well of water, and the only way you can get that water is from a dirty cup, would you drink it? Would you drink it? Would you drink it? 
You would drink it. Why? Because that dirty water is getting ready to save your life. Well, guess what? Sinners are thirsty. You're a vessel to be used. You're about saving the life. So what? You get a particle of sand in it. I wouldn't care. So what? There's a little bird poop on it. Okay. Thank you for the protein. You're going to have to buy. You're going to have to buy. You're laughing, but you're going to have to bypass what you don't like to get what you need. God uses who's available, not who's clean. Now, only clean people can give certain gifts. That's why you need to be clean. Because only the clean can impart. I'm done. Father, we thank you. We thank you and we praise you for this time. I pray that everybody under the sound of my voice, they hear me. It's such a gifted audience. Such a masaprovadania. Yata baba. When you're going to accept who you are, says the Holy Ghost. I hear him saying you way more than what you think.